In Germany, you've been the Federal Minister of Justice and Consumer Protection for the past year, and before that you held other federal positions. For what reason did you decide to run for MEP and get involved in the wider European political sphere? Well, actually, there are three main reasons. One is that a personal one, that I'm really a European from head to toe. My whole family is European. Where I live, uh, it's at the border of four European countries, and my whole life has been European. Um, the second one is um, that, of course, now is the time where a lot of decisions are being taken in Europe, a lot of um, decisions that really will determine how, um, how this Europe will develop, where we're going to go and what kind of Europe we, we want. And it's the place to be at the moment. And uh, the third reason is uh, my political party, which I wanted to support. We ha we're having a hard time at the moment in Germany and I wanted to do my share um, to, to help. Now, it is undeniable that in this round of elections, there has been a significant popularity for a far-right sentiment across Europe. So, um, to what can we attribute this increase and what do you think it will mean for the future of Europe? Well, my perception is that, yes, we do have this discourse that had, has kind of mingled into uh, the normal uh, discussions that we are having uh, all over Europe. But it, it has not turned out as something that people do vote for um, significantly more than they did in the past. The, um, the far right wing parties, the, the populists, have, have not gained as many votes as uh, expected, not in Germany, not in other parts of Europe. So, so I think there is kind of a gap between the discourse and the publicity and the attention that they get and what really reflects um, within votes and, and what people feel. I'm deeply convinced that most people do not support this ideology of, you know, every country first and egoism uh, before altruism. And um, I, I believe that most people want to live together in Europe, um, in peace and with respect and maybe maybe that media should also question themselves if their discourse is the right one um, because it, before the elections everybody said they are going to have maybe 40 percent of, of the seats um, don't make them bigger than they are mm. so miss barley there are so many questions to consider in the european political sphere currently from refugee issues climate change to youth unemployment and and the enlargement process what issues will be the top priority for your group the the party of european socialists in the next five years well during the campaign we stood up for uh, social rights we want the european pillar of social rights that was um, that was uh, concluded upon uh, on 2017 to well to be filled with uh, with action with uh, with measures now um, this is one very important um, point that we make and definitely one other will be uh, the rule of law which is at the moment at stake uh, in Europe which is in to my um, in my opinion, the, the ground that we all should stand upon and to strengthen and defend that will be very important. Mm. So regarding the Brexit debate, uh, Jeremy Corbyn of the UK's Labour Party, another member of the Party of European Socialists, recently stated that Labour would take a pro-Remain stance and would support a second referendum. Ms Bali, I'm curious to know what your stance is on this debate and what it could mean for the Party of European Socialists if they were to lose those seats held by the Labour Party, should Brexit go ahead? Well, um, my personal position I already took um, three, more than three years ago, um, when I already stated I think a, re a second referendum is, um, is inevitable, or at least makes a lot of sense, because nobody knew what 
what that means to leave the European Union. So even if you said, I want to leave, you, you, everybody or those who said remain had to find out what is that, uh, what, what are we talking about? And now people know if they voted remain or, or leave. Um, and now, now that you know, now that, now that everybody knows, I think this is now the, the moment to take a second decision. It's not the same decision, it's a different one. Um, so, of course, I would love Britain to, to stay, UK to stay. I am a British citizen myself and I love this country and I respect every vote of, of the British citizens. But, um, of course, I would, I would love to see Britain in the European Union. And, um, yeah, and therefore, I mean, if, if uh, the UK leaves, then we will have less seats. Yes, then that's the case, and we will still be a strong, uh, strong force within the European Parliament, of course. Mm. Now, a recent uh, two-year survey by Deutsche Welle showed that from June 2017 to March 2019, women in Germany are still paid 21% less compared to men. As the former Federal Minister for Family Affairs, how are you going to work to decrease that gap, not only in Germany, but also across the whole of Europe? Well, across the whole of Europe, it's a bit less. I think it's 16%, but there is still a gender pay gap within the European Union. Um, we have taken measures in Germany. Um, in the first first run, it's uh, the right to get the information if you earn less than your male um, comrades at work do. Um, that is the first first step. And I know that um, there are plans in, in Europe to install something similar. At least this was what Franz Timmermans, our leading candidate, proposed. Um, but you see, you always see that this is an issue that conservatives do not support. They actually um, even neglect that there is a gender pay gap of 21%. In Germany, they say um, you have to um, take into consideration certain facts that determine these 21%. And if you do, then it's only 6%. What are these facts? These facts are that part-time workers um, do not have the same career chances than, than others, uh, that the, the jobs that women usually or commonly um, uh, have are paid less than the ones that male persons usually uh, fulfill. And I do not see why you should not take these uh, these uh, um, points into consideration. All these are gender-based uh, um, uh, points of, of of influence. So um, yes, it is. It, I think it is a scandal that in 2019 it is still the case. But as long as conservatives and liberals um, uh, are the uh, the strongest groups or the ones that determine politics, we, it, I don't think it's likely to change. Mm. We, need, we need progressive majorities for that. Ms. Bai, thank you so much for your hospitality once again and for this insightful discussion. Mm -hmm.